Hey guys, and welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about the Pizza Palette from Glamlight and doing a palette bingo with it. I will explain why I'm doing a palette bingo as I talk about the palette. I've never done one before. I get kind of what the idea is. We're going to go for it and see what happens. So if that sounds like fun, then let's do this. All right, this palette is not particularly new. It came out, I believe, at the beginning of the year, end of 2018, I think it was January of 2019. At any rate, it's been out for a while now. I have had it for a while. I kept saying that I was going to do a review and just kept pushing it off. I will explain my reasons. But first, let's talk about the palette. It is $40 US. You can purchase it on the Glam Light website, which I will link down below. It is a cruelty-free and vegan product, and you get 18 shades. Also, the packaging is pretty darn cute. So this is the outer box that it comes in, obviously very much a pizza-themed thing, and that carries right on through to the inside of the box. Now, this palette is gigantic. It is bigger than my head. I've got a big head, and this thing's bigger. But you can see, obviously, it looks like a pizza. Under here, it looks like the wood whatever that you put on to like wood fire the pizza. It's got a nice little hinge here. The thing that I do appreciate is that this is flat. So when I store it, I just store it like this so that it's not rolling around all over the place. And then when you open it up, it does fold all the way back. It does come with a mirror, but because it does that and does that. I don't really see the point of it unless you're propping it against something, but I just don't bother using it. There are the shades inside. And as I said, there's 18 of them and they do run the gamut in terms of the colors. I will say the vast majority of them are matte. There are two shimmers out of 18 shadows. And the problem that I have with this palette is that I don't know what to do with it. And that is why I haven't done a review, and that is why we're doing a palette bingo today. I, I don't think it's the palette itself. I think it's me. Honestly, I think it's me. Because I'm not afraid of color. I'm not um, particularly new to pairing colors. Like, I can do that. But I think, honestly, I think what my problem is, is that when I'm holding it, and I look at this part... These shades, because the palette's so big, these shades are just sitting in my peripheral vision. So typically, like when you have a palette, say, just grab the one that's beside me, like the Stila palette, you take a look at it and you can see all the shadows in one shot and so therefore you can see sort of different color options and pairings and all of that. Whereas when I look at this palette, I have to move my eyes in order to see all of the shades that are in there. And that, it sounds kind of silly when I say it, but I think, honestly, I think that's what it is, is because I just, unless I hold it, like, really far away, then I can see it all, but it, I, I think it's that combined with the fact that they're laid out in a circle. I don't like non-linear things, and that is definitely me. That is not the palette, that is not a complaint about how this performs, or anything like that. It's me. I prefer things in a line because then I can see them paired against each other and set beside each other. It's just easier for me just to be able to see it that way. I'm, that's the visual preference that I have. So having everything set out in a circle where you have purple up here, you have pink here, pink down here, you've got orange, you've got green over here, and then other greens on this side. Like it's, they're not even grouped in tone, and so I think that that is what's throwing me off. I, I struggled with the idea of depotting this because I was like, well, part of what I'm paying for is the packaging and blah, blah, blah. Um, I, I really don't need a palette this big tying up space in my collection. I really don't. Also, I ordered the burger palette. I, I wasn't going to. I really wasn't because I don't want to get sucked into like feeling compelled to having to order all of the food-based palettes. Um, but when I saw the shades inside, I was like, that looks so fun. And they're all lined up in rows. So I can actually deal with it. 
So I'm getting a palette that has cool outer packaging. I can just keep the burger one if I really need some sort of kitschy, unique palette to put on display or for me to look at, whatever. Um, so I think, honestly, I think what I'm going to do is depot this and put it into a magnetic palette because then I think I'm going to get a lot more use out of the shadows. I will say I have played around with this and the shadows are fine. The mattes do blend nicely. I said there was two shimmers. There's three, sorry. The purple one at the top is also a shimmery shadow. Um, they do blend nicely. I do find that some of the colors don't translate to be the same as the color in the pan, particularly mushroom. I found that it just, it applied a bit more, a bit more purple than I thought it was going to be. Um, it looked a bit more brown in the pan to me. So again, there is mushroom there and there it is on my hand. So it just looked a little bit more purple. So when I applied that, it kind of changed what I wanted to do with the look because it wasn't the color that I was anticipating it to be. Um, but overall, the performance is there. Like I said, they blend nicely. They are very pigmented. They pack a punch. I've got no complaints in that regard. The complaint is just my ability to access this palette because of the way it's laid out. That's me. So that's really like, that's really all I'm going to say about the palette. There's really not much more to say. Um, I do appreciate that it's vegan. I do appreciate that it's cruelty free. I have not taken that stance upon myself to be exclusively either of those categories. Um, for me to be exclusively either would be very hypocritical because I don't carry that over to my diet or to the clothing that I wear or anything like that. So while I, I struggle with it because I don't want to say that I support animal cruelty or animal testing. I don't think that it's a good thing. Um, but at the same time and in the same breath, I do buy from brands that aren't cruelty free. So that could just mean that I'm a shitty human being. It really could. Um, I do struggle with it. So I, I have no answers. I'm just a uh, human and those are my flaws. But I appreciate that for an indie brand, that is what they've done. Uh, so, also, where is this made? Designed and assembled. Oh, that's weird. It's vegan, but it's made in China. I'm not, like I just finished saying, I'm not fully like aware of the ins and outs of that. I thought that if products, is it just that if products are sold in China, that they have to be tested? Maybe because it's not sold in China, but just manufactured there. I don't know the nuance. I really don't know. At any rate, it is assembled in the U.S., but it is made in the People's Republic of China. I always find it kind of cute where they, like, shorten that down to PRC just to kind of slide it under the radar. But People's Republic of China is China. So, at any rate, there it is. Now, now that I've rambled about that for ages, let's get into the palette bingo. Like I said, there are 18 shades, and I'm going to use random.org in order to assign myself an eye look. I think I'm going to go for four shadows, um, just because then I can round it all out and have like a full look, and I'm really hoping for some fun colors in there. So, here we go, and I'm going to show you. So, where are we? There it is, we're gonna generate three. So three is probably the most boring shade in here. Garlic, I start up here and go all the way around. So this is 12 and then this would be 13, 14, 15, all the way around to 18. So this is three here, which is garlic. All right, so then I'm just gonna hit generate again. And we've got six. <laughs> that's the shade hot sauce. That is the bright ass orange that I think everybody who reviewed this palette used that shade. And I can't say that I blame them because it's probably the most fun in the palette. I'm just writing all these down because I have the memory of a bloody goldfish. All right. Thirteen. <coughs> Excuse me. So 
So 13 is this shade right here called Pineapple. It is one of the shimmery shadows that are in there, and it is actually really pretty. All right, one more. We got shade 14, which is Basil. This one right here, it's sort of an army green. All right, so let me just do some swatches so we can see all of those laid out beside each other. Okay, so what do we got here? So this is Pineapple, Unprimed Arm, FYI. And then Basil is here. This one is Garlic, and then Hot Sauce. It's gonna look very fall appropriate, I think, when it's all said and done which is not the season right now, but that's okay. It is my favorite season. So what I'm going to do is do one eye and then come back and recreate it to show you guys, and then we'll wrap it up. So I'll be back in a second. And we're back. Hello. As you can see, I went for like a halo eye with pineapple in the center, uh, basil all around. There is garlic blended up in here and blending out hot sauce, which is obviously underneath the eyes. So let's get to recreating it. So I started off, my eyes are primed, but I started off using that garlic shade and put it up into the transition area. You really can't see it on my skin tone, but I find that it does help the other shadows to blend, or at least the, um, what is it, basil, basil to blend. Then I used a tapered blending brush and picked up basil and blended that on the inner and outer portion of my lid and then across the crease as well. I find that brush just a little bit too big for the inner portion, so I'm going to use one from Real Techniques after I drop it, and it is their shading brush. It's just a little bit smaller. Then I took a smaller blending brush here and picked up more of that garlic shade just to help blend out basil even more. Then I took a very flat brush. This is actually one that I got at Michael's. It's from a brand called Simply Simmons, and it's the number 10 brush. It was like $2 and it's perfect for um, like halo eyes and cut creases and things like that. And I used the IT Cosmetics concealer in the shade Light and just put the tiniest amount on the brush. Like that's enough to do it. Then I just applied that to the center of the lid and blended it out a little bit. Then I took a flat shading brush, this one's from BH Cosmetics, and picked up Pineapple, which again is that shimmery yellow shade here. And then just patted that on top of the concealer.
So that it doesn't look like one stripped down, I went back in with the shader brush and picked up more of that shadow called Basil and just sort of blended the edges and across the top. Then I used a MAC 221 brush and picked up the shade Hot Sauce. Just to build the intensity up a bit, I went in with a brush from Volaire. This is the E09. It's just a really, it's a really soft sort of pencil brush and picked up more of that bright orange shade and just ran it close to the lash line. I took a clean brush, this one is from Morphe, it's the M433, and just used it to blend where the orange and the green meet. And to help create that shape on the outer part there as well. And then I blended again with garlic. For inner corner highlight, I find that there's really just not a particularly workable shade in here unless you want to go for a colorful option. But because there are other colors going on, and because I wanted the halo eye to sort of stand alone, I didn't want to bring the yellow into the inner corner as well, I just used a highlighter. So for my inner corner, I used the Amrezy highlighter from ABH. If I had an orange eyeliner, I would definitely use that in my lower waterline, but Sadly, I don't. So I just went for a nude option just because I didn't want to deepen it up too much. I didn't want to overly brighten it. I just kind of wanted to leave it as it is, um, but enhance that natural color a bit. So this one's from Rimmel and it's in the shade Nude. For my upper lashes, I used a liquid liner, which is also from Glam Light. This just arrived with the Pizza Palette when I got it. I didn't order it. They just threw it in as sort of a gift with purchase and it is their Calligrapher eyeliner. So obviously it looks like a little feather here. You pull it out and it's a felt tip eyeliner. And I really don't have any complaints with this. Felt tip and I sort of have a love-hate relationship. Some are definitely better than others. And this one's right up there, to be honest. I really don't have any issues with it. It does come to a very nice point. It doesn't pick up a ton of shadow underneath it. It doesn't get sticky on top of itself. Like it's, it's a great little liner. For mascara, I'm going to use the Velvet Noir from Marc Jacobs. I thought about putting falsies on with this, but because I have the halo eye going on, I don't really want to cover it up with a bunch of lashes, so mascara for the win. Now that the eyes are complete, all I have to do now is my lips. I'm going to use a lipstick from Shiseido. This is one of their uh, modern matte powder lipsticks, and it's in the shade Disrobed. I just want a nice neutral option for this so that it doesn't detract from the eyes. Okay, and there you have it. So overall, um, let's talk about the liner really quickly. I do like it, it doesn't smudge, it doesn't feather. Um, it is a felt tip. If you don't like felt tips, you're not gonna like it because it's a felt tip, but as far as felt tips go, it's quite nice. The palette itself is gonna come down to whether or not you're drawn to the colors that are in there and whether or not you can abide 
gigantic packaging like this. It is, it is gimmicky for, like, it is gimmicky packaging. It is. Uh, but that doesn't detract from the quality of the shadows. They do apply beautifully. I didn't have any fallout going down on my cheeks using it. They blend nicely. There's a lot of pigmentation in there. You do get a lot of options in here. It's just, as I explained, for me, I have a hard time figuring out how I want to pair them. This palette bingo thing was awesome, and it was one of you that recommended it to me, particularly about this palette, because I was saying in another video that I just don't know what to do with it. So I'm not sure who it was, and I'm so sorry that I can't remember, but thank you very much for the suggestion, because I never would have come up with that on my own. It made it so much easier. It was a lot of fun to do, and I can see myself doing it again, just to sort of test my own creativity. So uh, it was a lot of fun. I think I'll do palette bingos again at some point. If you're interested in seeing future ones of those, let me know down below. And with all that said, I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch, and I will see you in my next video. Until then, just be a decent human being. Bye for now.